always have this uh, idea that Minnesota might go red. It's always kind of a teaser state, but it never quite makes it. It's been a little close a couple of times, but uh, it never quite breaks over in the presidential election. What do you think? Is there a chance that Minnesota could break through and find some wisdom in November of this year? Well, the problem is this is a state that has, you know, since Obama has basically been taken over by illegal aliens being brought in as refugees, in um, particular uh, Minneapolis. You look at Ilhan Omar, huge Somali presence there, and we're still having the same thing. So it was used, the Office of Refugee Resettlement was used basically to take over many northern states. And, you're, you know, a guy from Michigan, you see that up there as well. Um, that's one of the biggest problems you have in Minnesota. Uh, what's interesting, though, is there is backlash against Joe Biden from from the Islamic community and from the, the Democrats in general across the state. One thing that I've noticed today in particular is the incredibly low voter turnout. This is the seventh location we've come to, uh, polling location, and I've seen probably in total 12 voters over the course of about four hours. Um, it's incredibly low turnout, and in particular in Democrat strongholds. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what the primary turnout is. I don't think that will reflect what the general uh, election turnout is. Uh, there's I, 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 my, my sense is there is no love for Joe Biden on the Democrat yeah, side, I but that. there is less love for President Trump uh, on the Democrat side. So, but again, we'll have to wait and see. Um, we'll again, see it's just happens, a, a heavy right? Democrat area. Yeah. All right. Let's jump over to David Zier. He's in the Tar Heel state of North Carolina. David, what are you seeing there? Is it just as slow or pretty slow? What do you what, what's your sense of things? I would say that turnout is low to moderate. This polling station's my fourth of today. It's a little bit heavier here, but I'm in a Democrat stronghold. There's an enthusiasm gap here, and less than 10% of North Carolinans um, came out to vote in early voting. It was about 28%, according to my calculations, in South Carolina, just get, to give you an idea. So there's no challenger to Biden today, except uh, no preference, and I think that about a third of the people who showed up at the polling stations we've been to are on affiliated and that's a big concern north carolina is the state to watch this year not only have governor lieutenant governor treasurer attorney general and you've got the rnc leadership coming from here probably but you also have uh this incredible thing with the house of representatives going on it's a seven seven split the house members here to right now it could go 10-4 in republicans favor shifting the balance of power in the u.s house in in November here. Uh, but the other big story is the unaffiliated here um, are 37 percent of the vote here and 45 percent of them are under the age of 35 uh, percent leading to maybe a third party candidate. And the other note, uh, Steve, that um, is big here is that there's 80,000 less Democrats registered than two years ago and there's 50,000 more Republicans registered in North Carolina. So it's a really interesting dynamic. Very, very uh, important uh, state this year. Yeah, and it's the I, most I important that, state uh, after the battleground industrialized. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I think North Carolina is becoming a, a red state. I think it's doing what uh, Ohio did and Iowa did. We'll keep an eye on it again. Special coverage tonight. Ben, David, thank you. That special coverage here begins at 6 o'clock tonight. So you want to see that 6 to 10 tonight. Real America's Voice Super Tuesday coverage. Don't miss any of it. Now